Beethoven's string quartet in E minor, opus 59, number two, is the most pensive, emotionally turbulent, and arguably the most dramatic of the set of three opus 59 Razumovsky quartets. Beethoven's style has evolved considerably since his opus 18 quartets, and everything is now just larger in every way, in their form, in their length and sonority, as well as their narrative and dramatic complexities. This is Beethoven in his full element, not emulating anyone else, but secure in his own abilities and in his contribution to the genre. The quartet's two opening chords sets up this sense of turbulence and drama right from the very beginning. These two brusque cadential chords are a musical motive that is heard throughout the movement, usually followed by a dramatic pause before the response is heard. Throughout the movement, he juxtaposes major and minor keys, changes temperaments and harmonies quickly, and uses syncopations to play with the sense of meter, furthering the sense of discomfort, of things never really quite settling down. The music remains edgy and suspenseful, moments of quiet anxiety exploding into ferocious outbursts before it eventually ends by fading away into sudden stillness. <laughs> Beethoven gives the performers an instruction at the beginning of the second movement to treat this piece with a great deal of feeling. It is a deeply introspective movement that unfolds quietly and slowly, yet almost timelessly. The music seems to plumb the depths of humanity and human expression and alternates between hope and despair, anguish and joy. There's a deep sense of awe and wonder in this movement, something almost spiritual. According to Carl Czerny, a student of Beethoven's, this movement was inspired while Beethoven was contemplating the starry sky and thinking of the music of the spheres. The dotted rhythm plays a big role in this movement, showing up in a variety of guises, in the melody, in the counterpoint, in the bass line, and Beethoven notates them in three different ways. One of the ways he notates this is by a tie from the eighth note into the sixteenth note, sometimes with a carrot over the 16th note as well. Sometimes we see it with a rest in between the 8th note and 16th note, and sometimes we see it with no articulation at all, like this example over here. These subtle differences serve to create quite different nuances and expressions, so it's interesting to ask ourselves why Beethoven would have gone to the trouble of notating everything in the manner that he did. The third movement is once again a scherzo in E minor, more anxious than humorous. The sense of dance is stilted and furtive, moments of conviction alternating between moments of doubt, and this changes temperaments quickly and abruptly. The trio section in E major offers a more grounded, upbeat narrative, and here we hear Beethoven's inclusion of a Russian theme. The original theme, Glory to the Sun, is a spacious, majestic hymn. which Beethoven transforms into a carefree little tune first heard in the viola, and then passed around in all four voices in different combinations until the increasingly chaotic repetitions seem to spin out of control and pile into each other. Musicologist Joseph Kerman describes this as Beethoven taking this tune and pile driving it into the ground. Usually in these scherzo and trio movements, the A section is repeated again after the trio, before it concludes. And Beethoven takes that idea and expands it, because why not, and asks the performers to go through that cycle one more time, creating an ABA, BA form. The final movement begins in the deceptively open key of C major. <laughs> nice reprieve, but a bit jarring in that the three previous movements were in E minor or major. This movement is again in rondo form, and the main melody is full of joyful bravado, and a dotted rhythm drastically transformed from the second movement once again propels this music rambunctiously forward. This movement alternates between major and minor modes as well, and there's a great deal of harmonic shifting around in between the rondo sections. 
and it appears that C major will prevail after all in the most triumphant return to the theme until we are pulled abruptly into the coda where E minor becomes firmly established yet again and we remain where we came from. Instead of succumbing to the darkness, perhaps Beethoven is fully embracing it and accepting it on his own terms. He accepts his fate and remains defiant until the end. Thank you.